Hi everybody, it's uh, John back again with another model in box review. Um, what we're looking at today is an airplane that probably doesn't doesn't really need any um, introduction. But uh, just in case you don't know what it is, you're looking at a Junkers JU87. I think this version is of a R2 variant, which is in the desert, long range desert version from the desert campaign that the Luftwaffe sent aircraft to to assist the uh, Italian forces in Northern Africa. Um, the model I'm actually doing the review on is the Ravel 172nd scale Junkers J87B2 stroke R2. And we'll do the boxing history, but the boxing history is a little bit complicated because Ravel did actually design and produce a Stuka, but it wasn't this kit that I'm doing a review on. And you'll see in a minute exactly what I mean. <clears throat> First of all, not to be confused with this kit. This is a 1976 release of the Ravel Junkers J87B and R in 172nd scale. Now, the reason why you shouldn't um, get this kit mixed up with the model that I'm actually doing a review on is because this kit is an earlier tooling. It's not as accurate in terms of overall outline, but in actual fact, the kit's got quite a lot going for it if you find one. Um, they tend to be reasonably expensive, in excess of 15 quid when you buy one. But this kit actually has an engine in the forward engine cowlings, which can be accessed and viewed, painted up and viewed upon. And the kit is actually quite nice. I do remember having this model in my stash, but unfortunately I sold it to somebody who was desperate to have one, and I wished I'd never done that now. But uh, that is the 1976 release of the Revell Junkers J87B and R, and it should not be uh, mixed up with this kit which is the model that I'm actually doing the inbox review on but I'm doing the Ravel rebox of the Italieri Junkers J87 B2 and R2. This kit was originally released in 1997 it's actually a half decent model it's got quite good panel line designs you'll see that in a minute in the sprue but unfortunately the kit that I've got when you see the sprue parts on it you'll understand why I've got a bit of an uphill climb to do on this particular kit. The Ravel kit, sorry, sorry, the Italieri kit was released in 1997 in this guise, and then it was also re-released in 1999 as a special version incorporating Italian markings. I can't remember what the Stuka was called, or rather the J87 Stuka was called in the Italian Air Force, but I've got a feeling it was something like Pecciara Celiaro or something. It was something like that. Um, but of course the Italians used the Stuka to great effect in the North African campaign until the arrival of quite seriously um, upgunned and much better fighters on the Allied campaign than the P-40 that it originally came up against. Um, 1999, that was the Italieri release, and then in 2002 was the Revel reboxing, and this is the model I'm actually doing an inbox review on. Um, sorry about the image, it's not fantastic, uh, but... Yeah, we'll get to that in a minute. Um, it's in the blue box releases. Now, this kit's box is actually quite big. It's a lot bigger than the, the kit inside. And unfortunately, Ravel do this quite a lot. Um, they actually produce a box that's an awful lot bigger and makes you think that the kit inside is bigger than it is. But the sprues inside are quite big, but the model itself isn't actually that big at all. But that's the 2002 release from Ravel. The kit was re-released in 2007 as a starter kit with acrylic paints, uh, liquid poly and a brush. Um, as the J87B2 Stuka, now I'm pretty sure that it had markings for an R2 as well inside the kit. But it's only marked and retailed as a B2 Stuka. But that is definitely a North African campaign variant and I'm pretty sure they only sent R2 models to the North African campaign um, as far as the Luftwaffe were concerned. 2007 also saw a release from Tamiya of the Italieri kit. Um, so if you get a Tamiya model in this boxing, a Ravel model in the boxing I showed earlier, they're actually just the Italieri kit inside the mould. Inside the box, sorry, and the mould's exactly identical. The Tamiya kit, I think, has different markings. Um, yeah, and the markings, obviously, being a ta uh, Tamiya, Tamiya markings, will be very good as well. Um, <clears throat> Lastly, Italieri released this kit as a J87 B2 and R2 Stuka model number 1292. And this kit has a set of super decal sheet, sheet incorporating four different variants, including the Italian, the German, and I think there might even be a Spanish Condor Legion variant. 
and um, maybe a Polish variant. I think the Polish variant is in the Ravel kit as well, but we'll get that into we'll get to that in a minute. Just leave you with an image now of a JU87B2. This is one serving the uh, European theatre, and was probably shot pr just prior to uh, the Battle of Britain starting. And the kit, the aircraft had probably was finishing a sortie or on its way back from a French uh, bombing mission. Um, nice, interesting picture here because it shows the ruggedness of the Ju87. I'm actually a big fan of the Ju87. I actually think it it is an ugly plane. There's no doubt about that. It's a very ugly plane, but it does look like a war machine. It looks like something that. Um, you would want to fear and it was a very feared weapon in the beginning beginning stages of the war um, not a very nice plane at all <clears throat> so anyway we'll just pan the camera down <clears throat> have a look at the kit in question here we go this is the kit in question I'll try and angle that up a little bit so we can get that done and then we'll have a look at the model in question this is the kit it's quite a big box it's my hand Actually, what I'll try and do, I'll just try and pull the camera up a little bit to give you a little bit more scope. I know what's going on here. It's a little bit better. So that's the box virtually in full. <laughs> Sorry about that. This is a stand. I really need to get a better stand, don't I? That's um, that's my hand on the box. It's quite a big box. It's quite, quite large indeed. It opens up at one end like this. Now, before I get the sprue out on this particular kit, I need to tell you that this is a Stuka kit that needs a bit of TLC. Because I bought this kit from eBay a few years ago. Um, and unfortunately, although it hasn't actually been started construction-wise, I don't know what this guy was thinking of, but he sprayed it, and he sprayed it in a paint finish that I just don't understand. I don't understand why he's even done this. Um, but you'll see in a minute what I mean. Get the uh, parts out <clears throat> and the instructions. The other thing that's missing from this kit is there are no decals, so I can't show you the decals. But on the um, the build progress video, I'm going to show you the decals that you normally get in the kit because there are images of it um, online, which is which is quite handy. There's also a part loose. I think there's a part come loose as well. I've got it out. No, there it is. We'll have a look at that in a minute. Now, obviously, it's not going to be easy to show you the detail and the the finish on the kit's parts because, as you can see, the, the parts look pretty dire, don't they? But he's, bas he's basically sprayed it in some sort of paint. Um, and I don't really know why he sprayed it in that paint. It's not a primer. And the paint has gone on terribly. It's going to need a little bit of cleaning up. The instruction leaflet is around about in between A5 and A4 size. There's an image of the kit built up, usual Revell format, um, with two different languages, German and English, giving you a little bit of uh, history of the Stuka there. And the Revell logo and the JU87B2 and RT Stuka ID at the top. And on the second page, you've got some um, safety instructions um, written in different languages there, quite easy to follow, no problem. And then on the third page, you've got a parts plan and I'm a massive fan of these parts plans I think they're brilliant the parts are laid out in three sprues <clears throat> that's two um, sandy colored plastic sprues and a tri clear transparency and I like these because these ID the parts and where they are on the sprue and ID the part number very very clearly and it's easy to get uh, parts incorrect if you haven't got one of these because the part numbers aren't clearly ID'd sometimes on some kit sprues as they should be and it's not really an issue when you have a parts plan like this it's, it just makes things an awful lot easier now then <clears throat> I haven't gone through this instruction leaf bit like I normally do the kit builds up in 25 parts 25 stages rather and typical revel instructions the you build a lot of stages and there's not very many parts to each stage but what there is they id and they tell you what to paint and what colors to paint it during the during the uh, the method of uh, during the flow of construction so you, you can get a, a good finish uh, prior to putting the airframe together and everything and, and the interior of this kit seems to be quite detailed there's a there's a rear bulkhead um, that fits in between the rear gunner and the forward pilot the pilot who sits in the front there's an instrument panel there joystick proper floor pan with pedals 
Um, there's a rear gunner seat, which is nice, and it all seems to fit nice there into section five. Um, section one and two, obviously, the interior and the in interior is painted there, and section three and four is just finishing off the interior. In section five, put the fuselage together. Uh, it tells you to paint the interior there, which is quite nice. And then in section six, you put in the forward um, fuselage engine cowlings together with the radiator and the retainer pin for the propeller there and that all goes in at the same time so that's quite easy to follow quite self-explanatory really section seven <clears throat> section seven eight uh seven and eight are all to do with the forward engine cowling uh, and the engine covers and section nine and ten are the rear tail planes the stuka of course had um old school struts to support the airframe quite nicely in section 11 and 12 you're putting the main wings together you've got to open up a number of holes depending on which variant you want in section 11 there um, because the b2 and the r2 carry different stores underneath the wings and in section 13 you basically just put in uh, the machine guns and the two other wing fittings the pitot tube and the navigation light that goes on there section 14 um, it's just one part, and I think that's the part that's dropped off the sprue. I'll show you that in a minute. That's the rear um, exit vent for the engine. And in section 15, you're putting the two trousers and wheels together on the undercarriage. And one of them, of course, has um, a Jericho siren, and the other one has a, a butt end. The Jericho siren was used to produce the screaming, screeching noise that the Stuka made when it was in a dive that was so terrifying for people on the floor on the ground when the aircraft came into attack. Section 16, you're basically just putting those parts um, together quite nicely. And I don't know why, but they're telling you to put uh, section tw uh, part 27 on twice. Um, not sh really sure why, but yeah, it might, might become evident uh, when we get to that. There's a dust sheet there for the transfers, for transfers I never had in the kit. Uh, section 17 and 18 is all to do with the cockpit canopy. The machine gun there fits into the rear of the cockpit canopy glazing. Um, that's quite nicely detailed machine gun by the look of it. And the rear antenna fits into the rear glazing as well. This kit would normally be a bit of a nightmare to paint the canopy frame. But I usually have a nice method. And I might do a video showing people how I do that one day. Section 19, you're putting the propeller engine exhaust and the, f and the two air intakes onto the front engine cowling housing there and 20 you're putting drop tanks on putting the drop tanks together prior to putting them onto the airframe that's quite easy <clears throat> section 21 section 21 is to do with the dive brakes that's a safety instruction leaflet there i did wonder if the transfers were in there but they're not i did check 21 you've got the dive brakes they go into place and you've got a couple of uh, horn balances there for the um the, the rear flaps um quite nice and then 22 you've got two bombs which have to be constructed or is that no sorry that's the one bomb that goes under the central cradle um and the fin that goes at the back there into section 23 and in section 24 you're putting either alternative bomb layouts or just the fuel tanks so you can see there that's the difference between the R and the B2 variants. The R variant carried the, the R variant had wet stores under the wings so that you could carry uh, fuel tanks to extend the range because there was an awful lot more range involved with Stuka missions over the North African desert. And in section 25, you're finishing off the construction there with the pilot step and the swing bomb how, uh, swinging bomb arm and the bomb that goes underneath in between the rear, in between the two uh, forward undercarriage legs there and that completes the construction the the construction on the kit is quite easy it seems to be quite simple and straightforward and the instructions clearly define everything quite nicely now then <clears throat> i'm going to i'm just going to get a pair of scissors and open these up very quickly because the transparency on this kit is quite nice but the bag that <laughs> that they're in is not quite nice it's it's a bit tarnished to be honest with you but i'll just take them out because the parts are nicely protected inside whoops they're nicely protected inside that bag <clears throat> now then transparencies 
the transparency on this kit they're, they're crystal clear they're nicely framed they're a nice piece of work actually aren't they the forward um, canopy there it's quite nicely framed and the framework on that rear canopy with a gun mount there that's quite nicely finished as well that's the navigation line that goes on the wing nice piece of work I like the look of that yep that that would do me no problem whatsoever just put them back in the bag because I want to try and keep them uh, looking nice now then we've got a part here which is loose and I think this is this part which goes behind the rear exit vent for the engine cowling underneath and not a lot to write home about there and it's painted green so you're not going to be able to see an awful lot there but that is basically one part and we'll have a look at the wing sprue first <clears throat> I'm hoping to be able to show you what I'll do is I'll show you what this I really don't know what he's done <laughs> this is unbelievable for some reason he's painted this kit desert sand it's it's like the g7 that you get you know that buffy gloss color he's painted that not very well i'm gonna to have to clean this up quite a lot and then he's gone over the upper surfaces in some sort of matte green and it's it's just all flaked away it's terrible it needs a lot of tlc this kit but i'm hoping to show you some of the detail the surface detail on these parts because it's not actually that bad. I'll put my finger over here. Now these lines are actually recessed, believe it or not. They're quite fine. They're not particularly deep, but then you wouldn't really want them that deep in 70 second scale, would you? But they're quite nice. And that would show through as well if the paint wasn't there, but it would show through on the upper wing surfaces as well, because they're quite nicely moulded too. But I'm obviously going to have to clean that up. I think you can get some solvent, which will just take the paint off. I think I'll be able to do that eventually. Um, there's the grill. That's quite nicely moulded as well. You can probably just see that. And the engine cowlings, which you won't be able to see the details so well, but they're quite nicely moulded. There you go. Another feature of this kit that I quite like is it has separate exhaust pipes. So you can finish the airframe, paint it all up, and then paint the exhaust stubs and get a really good finish prior to putting the kit together, which is good. <clears throat> surface detail there on the the drop tanks you can just see the surface detail there that's quite nice the wheels are a bit nondescript there's not too much going on there really you can see a bit of the detail there Doesn't look too bad do they the propellers nicely molded the now the stuka the stuka's propeller i'm going to show you this side because this side is an awful lot better to see the stuka's propeller was actually this shape exactly and Atelieri had it absolutely correct which is great fuselage again you won't be able to see much of the surface detail through that paint but you can just about see the recessed panel lines that are in there <clears throat> tail wheel it's quite nicely crafted as well and the trousers for the undercarriage they're quite nicely crafted too I'm hoping this will clean up really nice but it does need a bit of TLC doesn't it instrument panel and the internal bulkhead and seat there that should paint up all right yeah no problem back of the spinner pilot seat there's the rear bulkhead you get a better look at the pilot seat there it's actually got the straps built into the kit which is quite nice it's not a bad seat the kit's not bad at all actually i was quite impressed the the quality of the parts are very good even the dive brakes i mean i've built a few stukas over the years um those dive brakes are pretty good. They're quite nicely crafted, quite nice. So that's the parts. The parts seem to be quite nicely crafted, which is great. <clears throat> I don't think the kit is going to give me too much of an issue, except in maybe getting the parts cleaned up so I can actually do do my usual work on them. But we'll have to see how it goes. Um, and what I'll do now, I'll just pack all this up very quickly so that we can go through the gun and close this video down. Um, it'd be quite nice if I could get this video to close down quite quickly. Now, <clears throat> in some of my inbox view videos, I've actually covered all of the options and costs in all of the scales, but I didn't want to do that. I've tried to get away from doing that 
with more recent videos unless the options and costs aren't that many and unfortunately the Stuka has quite a lot of options and costs so I've narrowed them down to 172nd scale and it just makes it a bit easier doesn't it the model we're reviewing today is the Ravel Junkus Ju87 B2 and R2 Stuka in 172nd scale its serial number is 04620 and it was released in 2002 there are decals for two versions unfortunately I haven't got the decals at all but the versions that come in the kit are a J87 B2 of 2 Sturka Gershwada 2 from the Polish campaign in 1939 and the second is of a J87 R2 of 3 Stuka Gershwada 1 based in North Africa in 1941. There are 73 parts on two sand coloured plastic sprues and four parts on a clear plastic sprue totaling 77 parts in total. The model measures about 6 inches long by 7 inch span and it sits 2 inches high on its undercarriage. Now the options and costs, um, we'll go through the standalone kits and then we'll go through the models that are reboxings of the standalone kits and I'll try to make this as quick as possible. Um, Academy do a JU87 B2 and R2 for about 5 to £15. Pound. Airfix did a JU87 B from a 1957 release. This is the Series 1 kit that first appeared in a bag. That kit retails for between £8 and £25, pound, although I have seen it go for an awful lot more than 25 quid. Airfix also released uh, another JU87 B2 in 1978, and this kit was originally released in Series 2, but eventually became a Series 3 kit, and that model I've seen go for as cheap as £3, pound, but it often goes for an excess of £10 to £20. Pound. Airfix also do a new tool of a J87 B1, a B2 and an R2 and that kit was released in 2016 and that kit usually retails between £10 and £16. Pound. Now Airfix also did a dogfight double of the new tool release of the J87 B2 and an R2 and you can, it also incorporated a gladiator which I think was a new tool gladiator as well. You can see a video of that um, and building that model and it's in the process of being built now. Um, the dogfight double kit goes for between 25 and 30 pound. Now Astra kit did a J87 B2. I've got no pricings available on that but Bilek also did a B2 and an R2 variant of a J87 and that kit retails for between 6 and 12 pound. Now I've got no pricings for the Checkmaster J87 A1 Checkmaster resin kit but beware it is a resin kit. And I've also got no pricing for the Cyber Hobby J87 B2 either. Fujimi did a quite nice J87 B and R2 for 10 to 18 pound, and Heller did a mediocre J87 B1 for 8 to 10 pound. Now High Tech did a multimedia kit. This incorporates white metal parts, resin, and injection molded styrene parts of a J87 A. This is the one with the massive boots that come under the fuselage, and that I've got no pricing available on that, but I have heard it's quite nice. The Italeri kit of the J87 B2 and R2 goes for between £5 and £20. And NPM do a J87A, again with the big trousers and the early variants, for about £10 to £24. Revell's J87 B2 and R2 is the reboxed Italeri kit. No, sorry, no, sorry. This is the B2 and the R... Sorry, the J87 B and R variant, which was the early release I showed you the image on the beginning of this video that kit can be picked up for as little as four pound and it usually goes for between 10 and 12 but i have seen it sell for about 25 quid um, it's not a bad kit either it's not as good as the italieri kit for overall accuracy but it's not that bad it's quite a good option special hobby did a j87 a for 17 to 20 pound and i've got no pricings for the upc option of a j87 b2 now then this these kits have been reboxed um, by several companies. The Airfix 1957 released kit was boxed by Airfix Corporation of America. Got no pricings available for that. The 57 release kit was also released by Airfix Lodela of a J87B and R2. No pricings available for that. Uh, Fluxug did a J87A, which is a reboxed NPM kit. No pricings available on that. And MPC did a J87B, which is a 1957 original release Airfix kit. No pricings on that. 
1957 Airfix release kit was also found in an MPC Key Cola JU87A rebox. No pricing is available on that. And this kit also featured in the Plasti JU87B bag kit. Again, no pricing is on that. Revell did a JU87B2 and R2, which is the subject of this kit, which is a reboxed artillery kit. It can be bought for as little as £5, but I've seen it go for between £10 and maybe £15 at the most. Revell Kikola also did a JU87B and R, which is the original release Revell kit. No pricing is available on that. Tamiya released a JU87B2 and R2, which is the Italieri rebox for £10 to £22. And Testers did a JU87B2, which is a reboxed Heller kit. No pricing is available on that. Lastly, Svezda did a JU87B2, which is the Italieri kit. Again, it's about £9 to £12. But I haven't seen it on eBay for quite a long time. These prices are all sort of current prices at time of press here. Conclusions. <clears throat> Well, if you take into account all the Stuka kits that are out there, this kit doesn't seem to be that bad, but I would guess that it's not the best JV7 kit on the market. It has recessed panel lines, that, that which is good for a kit of this age, but the detail doesn't seem to be that crisp, although it's quite fine. Um, it, but I must admit that I have got an uphill task bringing this kit back from the doldrums that it's been in from its previous owner but it should clean up okay and i'm i'm not that bothered about you know the, the amount of work that's going to be involved in doing that the model reviewers seem to favor the fujimi kit from the older releases and i would think that the new release from airfix in 2016 is probably going to be the best of the bunch models to avoid are the 1956 sorry 57 airfix based kits as they are really awful and the later 70s releases from Airfix and Heller are just really run of the mill. But if you like bigger scales then opt for the Airfix 24 scale super kit and in 148th go for either the Italieri or the new release Airfix kits as they're really really good. That's the um, the video finished. Um, I hope this video has been of some, good, some use for you. Um, if you've got any questions, queries, anything to add just pop them in the comments slip and I'll get back with answers for questions as quickly as I can. I hope all your modelling is going smooth and your projects are running true to form. And uh, thanks for tuning in and I'll catch you for the next one. Bye bye for now.